I've written a history of the Congo, just came out in Italian. I don't know, in Italian it's, yeah, it's about the same as in Dutch, 700 pages. Uh, why writing such a thick book on the history of a, con of, a, of a country that few people really bother about? Well, I bother about this country. Congo uh, used to be a Belgian colony. I'm a Belgian. And yet, at school and even in my family house, there was very little about Congo in my education. Even if my father had been there after the independence, he spoke very little about it. And I wanted to have a better understanding. And about, about 10 years ago, I made my, my first trip to Congo and I was looking for a book. I, I, I live in Brussels and I went to a number of bookshops trying to find a good book on the history of Congo to read during the flight. And I didn't find it. And at that point, I decided perhaps I should give it a go myself. And so this is, this is how, how this book really started. My book came out in 2010. And that was just before the 50th anniversary of Congo's independence. Now, when a number of books came out, a number of exhibitions took place, a number of real good documentaries were on television. And I think this was really a very important moment in Belgian mentality to come to terms with the colonial past and also get a new interest not only in the Belgian past in Africa but also in Africa today and I, th I think my book has played the role there it's been extremely well read and we have we have a big Africa museum in Tervuren near Brussels and there uh, one of the guides one told me since your book came out our visitors are more knowledgeable they ask more intelligent questions, they, they have a better interest. So it's, uh, it's unbelievable. When I was writing this book, I hoped that perhaps 10,000 copies were going to be sold. That seemed already quite a, a huge number given the size of the book. And I was very wrong. Uh, I think in Dutch now about 300,000 copies are sold and, and world perhaps half a million with the translation. So it's, it's been a success way beyond my own my own imagination and my own dreams. The main character of, of this book is not a person, it's a country, it's Congo itself. But I tell the story of that character by using a whole range of voices, voices from the past and voices from the present. This book was written by a Belgian, but it was not written in Belgium only. Uh, I spent many, many months traveling through Congo, interviewing over 500 individuals, and very different individuals, not just ministers and diplomats, because what they say you can already find in the newspapers, but interviewing you know, child soldiers, women that have been raped, poor people living on the countryside, people who had been there, you know, a whole range of persons. And when I started, the average life expectancy of Congo in Congo was 42, 43 years old. That was 2003. So I didn't expect to meet very old people. And then I realized, hang on, this is only 42 years old, because not because they're no longer old people, but so many children die. 20% of children die before the age of, of five. And at a given moment, I meet a man in Kinshasa. His name was Echen Nkazi. He's in the opening chapters of the book. And when I first met him, uh, I asked him, like I always do when I start an interview, when were you born? And his answer was, I was born in 1882. Now that is a bit of a staggering day of birth, given that this, this is the year in which Virginia Woolf was born. And, and we're talking about 2008. That was the, just the day after uh, Obama was elected in America. Uh, and I spent many hours talking to him. I spent many hours interviewing him. And he could give me details about Congo in the 1890s, even in the 1880s, given the name of the very first missionaries, talking about the very first railway construction, with such amount of detail that it could not have been memories handed down to him by his father. So at the end, I come to believe that probably, indeed, he was extremely old. He was certainly well above 120, perhaps well above 120 years of age. And apart from his great age, he was a great person. He was a fantastic man. Very wise, very warm, very hospitable. So it was, uh, it was a pleasure knowing him and the book is dedicated to him.
because he died just one week before the book came out. I really hope this book is more than just one Belgian writing about a former colony. Uh, it's, it's one European writing about Africa, and it's even more perhaps one person, one human being writing about another part of, of humanity. Uh, surprisingly, the European countries that are most in contact with Africa now are the ones without a very long or no African past at all. Uh, countries like Spain, Italy, Greece are getting a lot of migrants from Africa now, whereas Italy has had a couple of years of, of a colony in Ethiopia, uh, but, but Spain had all its colonies in, in, in Latin America. Uh, and I understand that for southern European countries, this arrival of, of uh, African migrants is quite a challenge. Where do we, who are those people? Where do they come from? What is their background? What is their culture? Do they have any culture? I mean, all these sort of questions uh, come up all the time. Uh, my book tries to show that uh, African history is fascinating. It's a complex history. Uh, and we should stop thinking about it in terms of it's exotic, it's far away, it's primitive, it's tribal. Uh, very often we seem to think that Africa does not belong to the 21st century. My vision is, if there's one continent where the 21st century is going faster than anywhere else, it's in Africa. So therefore it's important that we Europeans uh, come to an understanding of, of Africa and Africans, and also come to loving them. That's what I feel. Thank you.